Good afternoon. Um, yes, my name is Tracy Fountain and I am the candidate in the race who in addition to being a certified public accountant, a relief association audits to children and youth agencies. So in prior to that, I was the department's technical training manager. Uh, make no mistake, the bureau directors are leadership positions because we are the ones that are on the front lines of developing audit policies and procedures to make sure that the elected officials um, audit objectives are, are satisfied. We manage field staff, we, um, some of which are rank and file um, members of the union, management staff, things of that nature. We're responsible for the day-to-day -day operations of everything that the, um, the Auditor General's Office does on the, the audit side of the part. I'd like to say also that I am a, the candidate who was a candidate who was also born and raised in Pittsburgh, um, the Hill District, and I'm a graduate of Brashear High School. And I left Pittsburgh to attend Drexel University, and I always had the intentions of coming back, but made my way to Harrisburg, Dauphin County. And I went to the Auditor General's office because I needed two years of auditing experience to qualify for my CPA license, and that two years turned into 29 years. So that is um, pretty much strong evidence of how, how much I love the work that we do there. As Auditor General, um, I would take my experience and knowledge to really move the department forward by continuing Eugene D. Pasquale's work, but by also moving a step forward and adding performance audit components to all of our regular routine mandated audits so that we can get more of that uh, performance audit coverage in the 5,000 audits that we release um, annually. The other thing I'd like to point out is that when I started under the Hafer administration, we had 850 employees statewide and uh, through a series of budget cuts and things of that nature that were, in my opinion, political in nature, because the better our work got, the more light that we shine. Um, sometimes we were cut. Um, that as of November 1st, the department's down to 392 people while statewide while still being responsible for 5,000 audits annually. So um, I believe that I'm the right person for this job because I've been, or for this position, because I've been working in that environment for 29 years where we had to learn how to do more with less. And I would bring that same thought process, you know, to my role as Auditor General. Also, um, the last point I want to make is that every Auditor General that I've worked for, and that's been forced for, they all hired or appointed a CPA to serve as their Deputy Auditor General for audits. And that is the person that all the bureau directors reported to, to make sure that the elected officials audit um, objectives and agenda was met. So if I'm elected auditor general, I am that CPA, I can, instead of appointing a person, another CPA to that position, I can take and use that money, uh, that savings to hire additional audit staff. And my estimate is that that would save anywhere between six hundred thousand to eight hundred thousand dollars over a four year term. So I want to thank you, and I ask for your support and endorsement. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, you uh, the question we started with was about auditing experience, and clearly, you know, you've you've touched on that. Um, so perhaps we should skip to uh, the question of where can the Auditor General be proactive and uh, lead rather than being reactive? Um, the Auditor General um, can be proactive in, in many ways. I think one of the biggest ways um, as I travel around the state is understanding that while most Pennsylvania citizens know what the auditor, who the Auditor General is, they know the name of that person, they're not exactly clear on what, what we do and what our powers and duties are as an office. So um, I believe upping uh, the citizens of Pennsylvania's knowledge in that area is a way to be proactive. I also believe the proact being proactive as Auditor General comes from the type of audits that you um, choose to do um, when you have those limited resources. So making those decisions as to what, what's going to get priority. Um, one of the biggest things that um, that I see, uh, that I saw while I was still there because I had to resign to run, was that we're falling behind in the completion of the audits because there hasn't been a lot of 
analysis done with our regular routine audits. And so some auditing is about where you look. So what I would like to do as Auditor General is change the focus of those regular routine audits so that we can look at more, incorporate the look of more, um, more relevant items um, uh, for today. Uh, one of the examples I can give you, uh, has anyone uh, heard of the Erie Magistrates Audit? or district justice audit. Um, if you're not familiar with that one, what happened was with, uh, we do all, we're responsible for the audits of all the district justices or magistrates across the state, and there's about 2,000 of those. But that audit has historically been um, uh, financial in nature, where the audit objective was to cut, to count up the fees that were collected and make sure that they were all properly deposited. Well, what this Erie magistrate did uh, when it came time to um, charge the person or, or uh, with their uh, civil offense that would have been one fine, this uh, Erie magistrate, in thinking that she was doing the person standing in front of her a favor, decided to go and say, well, I'll give you a lesser, uh, give you an offense that will cost you a, a lesser fine. Where, where she erred was the fine that she ended up giving this uh, person was attached to a criminal offense. And that person ended up getting a criminal, um, a criminal uh, offense okay. on a background check, which barred that person from being accepted into the, uh, into, the, uh, into the military. 